and welcome back to some more Darklands with me, Polar Dash. Um, yeah, previously on Darklands, um, um, I need to, I'm doing some digging up of old memories here in my brain, because, uh, last time was uh, a little while ago. I... I unfortunately took another one of them breaks. <laughs> uh, and none of these breaks are ever intended. It just happens. It just I, I just like stay stay I just step away from this game for a while for unknown reasons. But yeah, last time I believe I think it was uh basement level two that our party navigated themselves through. We uh we we traveled through level one, and then we solved a riddle, which granted us access through a door that let down some ladders. And then uh, at basement level two, we did some we did some treasure hunting stuff, and then we came across this door, solved another riddle. And now a stunned figure has stepped forth out of it. Um, and now we have our uh, hands over our weapons, ready for anything. Right, so let's find out who this stunted figure is. Uh, once more we see a short entity step up, but this time it is clearly no dwarf. Its sinewy form and gross tusks mark it as a kobold. One of the sinister mind goblins. All right. Apparently, in medieval Germany, a kobold can be considered a mind goblin. Fun fact. Uh, and it is gibbering at us. In what looks to me like a rhyme. Uh, I don't know. These indentations are hinting at a rhyme, unlike the the dwarven language, which. Uh, which uh, is based off of Saint Seiya. Uh, right. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna gibber a rhyme. I don't know how to gibber. And uh, I'm not gonna try. <laughs> so here we go. Uh, we and doors have come to blows. So we would like you now to choose which one of us you will support in our fine battle. Else we'll lose. Yay for rhymes. Um. Wincing at the creature's doggerel, uh, whatever a doggerel is, uh, we think over what he has said and reply that we plan to not attack both sides indiscriminately. That's rude. Um, uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> hold on. Sifting through old memories, right? Um, I I think uh, if I remember correctly, the dwarves them themselves, the dwarves themselves uh, have uh, what's that word? Uh, admitted, yeah, right. Have admitted to the uh, to the fact that they're the ones that are. Uh, rousing everybody up and causing problems for the humans. Um, and the uh, well, what was the reason? Why am I not attacking both sides indiscriminately? I can't remember. There was... Oh, right, 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 right. The kobolds... The doors said that the kobolds are all goody two-shoe and um, and they're all about coexisting with the humans while the doors are all like no this is our property we sh thinks that we think that the, the humans sh should gtfo out of our dormant minds um, and and the kobolds are beginning to stand up to the doors who were bullying them for being like human lovers or something, right? 
Um, and now the doors are afraid that the kobolds are going to seek aid from the humans to kick the doors out of the mines. So the doors are all being all huffy puffy about it and are, um, I don't know, are being very immature about the situation by like pulling pranks on the humans and stuff and, and uh, pulling cheap, cheap punches against the kobolds, stuff like that. Um, and our, our party disapproves of bullying, so uh, I think the choice is obvious that uh, we should help these little kobolds out, these gibbering kobolds. You know, who if you squint might look kind of cute, depending on who you ask. All right. So um, Toby steps forward and uh, announces to the kobolds that we are here to help them. The kobold replies in weird quavering meeps. <laughs> I'm not gonna quaver out a meep either. I, I don't know how that's done. So uh, here we go. Aha! You seek to help us. Fine. Now I shall say which door to take. For should you take the wrongful door, you then shall make a great mistake. An iron door that's rusty red will lead you into our domains. The metal door, gold filigreed, doth open into dwarf terrain. Thus to defeat the door so vile, just utilize the golden door. Once through that door, old Mimingus, lord of all dwarf slaves, you'll meet for sure. Alright, so uh, here in Lovely Rhyme, the kobold is telling us that... Um, what is he telling us? I'm not exactly absorbing the information while trying to rhyme, that's the thing. Uh, my brain does not work like that. Okay, so the kobold is telling us that uh, beyond, I guess beyond this door that he's standing in front of, uh, the, the path splits up, and one path will lead to a rusty door, uh, and past it lies the, the, I know, the, the northern, the, the, the what? The, the, the kobold <laughs> uh, domain, and the, uh, and the other path, which leads to a gold door, is uh, leads to the uh, Dwarven neighborhood. Um, so the kobold here is encouraging us to uh, step through the uh, the gold door instead of the red door and take on Mimingus. Uh, he's apparently uh, a slave lord. Uh, Inferno does not approve of slave lord. And the kobold continues on. All right, so the, the kobold chitters on. Mimingus is the only dwarf whose wrath the kobolds do respect. If you could slay or conquer him, then you, the dwarvish plans, would wreck. Uh, Inferno is anxious to find out where the slave master is, so he asks the kobold, How can we recognize Mimingus, this dwarf slave master? The kobold retorts, Fear not, you'll know old Mimingus when perchance he and thee should meet. He towers over other dwarves by five or even seven feet. So this uh, Mimingus can change size. I guess that's convenient being in like a, in a mine uh, where the elevation, I guess, can change depending on where you are. Uh, but a dwarf that stands over seven feet, holy crap, that's... That's a giant short person. <laughs> uh, a giant dwarf. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Inferno's mind is boggled. Can't imagine a short person being so tall. Uh, the kobold turns and flees. Well, we're all mind boggled by the the image of a giant dwarf. Uh, but. Not ping. He is ever alert, uh, and while he's, uh, well, he looks about and uh, he spots a dwarf also scurrying away around a corner. All right, so a, a, there was a dwarven spy eavesdropping on our conversation uh, with this kobold, and now the dwarves know whose side we are on, and I suppose we'll uh, run into a couple of them, uh, 
and they'll probably attempt to slow our progress through this uh, through these mines here in Moore's Net. Okay, but now we are granted access down to the third floor. Let us proceed. Uh, what were the buttons for this game? Uh, travel as a group. Maybe I should do some equipment checks and stuff. Um, Alright, uh, Toby is wielding a dart since it reloads fast, but I wonder if the um, like the reload resets after going down a set of ladders. Guess we'll find out. Let's give him the brass handgun. No, I don't. We haven't used any potions and stuff. No. Toby's holding on to a fistful of bases for some reason. Okay, well we'll sort through that later. Uh, Inferno, who's not equipped with a shield, he's got three essence of grace. All right, and some iron arms and some new wins. All right, so it looks like I knew what I was doing, equipping our dudes and do dad. You have a what in your hand? You have a nothing in your hand. That needs to change. Where are your javelins? Don't you have javelins? Yeah, I figured as much. I probably threw all of them. Okay, so Ping is back with javelins. And he has potions in here somewhere. I'm not going to search for them. <laughs> I am uh, relying on my uh, two, three weeks ago self uh, to have equipped my uh, party dudes. Sufficiently to have equipped them sufficiently. Xana four EOGs. She's got a pike, which she's probably is she wielding a pike? No, a long spear. Yeah, it's probably smarter. Her shield set up. She's in her. Uh, what are them guys? Centurion type set up. Okay. One of them, like a uh, Roman Prinkle Pays. Prinkle Pay! Okay, and you got throwing axes. Okay. I don't know how much time has elapsed. That's bad. Uh, can I fix this? I don't think so. That's, that's poopy. Oh well. We're. We're good. Went into G button to walk as a group. Xiana is the party leader. I guess that's cool. Or not really. I would rather have Toby be the party leader and just Xiana be the be the that other kind of leader. The the combat leader person. Alright, so what's the hot key go downstairs? There is none. But there is. Ah, but the leader has to. That's why she's the party leader. All right, I guess that makes sense. All right, game. You've outsmarted me this time. Uh, what was it? You. All right. Um. Okay. There. <laughs> I was like, where? How do I get out of here? And I noticed this. All right. So um. The party f found themselves in a in a pit with uh, nowhere to go. But Axiana spots a uh, like a crack behind a wall here with a waterfall running down it, and leads the party through it by having them. Squeeze their bodies through this narrow passage. Okay. Water running down their heads. And the water leaking up from above. We're leaking down it. Okay. And it looks like we have uh, found ourselves an intersection. 
I think I'm gonna have Axiana poke her head out here and investigate, make sure that the path is clear. It looks like it. Now, which way do we go? Okay, that looks very complicated down there. I'll just kind of reveal some more map by having her step in here. Okay. Axiana spots a bit of lighting around the corner, lit by torches and whatever these are. Well, that reminds me. These things, I have no clue what they are. I remember playing back in the day, scratching my head at what these are. They might be holes. Or they might be like a... Like a... I don't know. Like a sleeping mattress. <laughs> For them doors or kobolds, maybe they sleep on it. Or maybe it is a hole. I don't know, it just seems like ran it's so random just like, like, like a hole. There's a skull next to it. So I thought it was like a like a sleeping mattress because of the skull. I thought maybe like the kobolds or the doors use it as a like pillow or something. The skull. Because, you know, monsters do that kind of stuff. Now yeah, whatever. The mystery will stay a mystery forever. Um, I don't know. This, this path looks easy, so I think I might go down it. And it wraps around downwards, so maybe it'll connect us to some of these uh, some of these intersection thingies down here let's hope, okay Axiana signals the rest of the party over here go let us find out what is behind this or what is down this corridor here we go Ooh, stuff. What could it be? Where is the enemy? Oh, there it is. All right, these things. <laughs> these things, lady and gents, is a gnome. Yes, it is. Very disgruntled looking gnome. Um, not the kind of German gnome that most people know nowadays. You know, um, I think um, them garden gnomes that uh, we might see you know, you might see uh, sticking out of some uh, Kentucky bluegrass in some people's lawns. Well, not here in Japan, but uh, you know, when I was back in the states, maybe. Um, yeah, apparently uh, those those gnomes, those gnomes are a lie. <laughs> uh, I am trusting that the uh, develops for the that the develops the oh wow developers. Of this game did a lot of background research on all the mythical creatures uh, that uh, the people of Germany back in the day believed in and uh, the dev team came up with this thing to represent the uh, the very well-known garden gnome uh, the, the German gnome so I don't know somewhere down in history this became the short dudes with pointy hats Smoking its half pipe. I don't know. Just cubes with feet. With a disgruntled face. I guess it's made out of uh, stone, so it has very good natural armor. But I can, it has no arms, which leaves its uh, natural weapon stat as poor. Yeah, I don't know. I, this, this is a gnome. That's weird. Maybe. Maybe some German guy way back in the day ran a ran like a home and garden store and noticed that uh, his garden gnomes weren't selling, so uh, decided to sell petrified midgets instead <laughs> and called them garden gnomes. He like labeled them, you know, gnomes, and it was a huge success. And now these things are phased out and. Uh, you know, you, you'll find them garden gnomes that uh, we all know and love in your neighborhood. I uh, can't remember what any of them go home and garden stores were called in, in the States. 
Lowe's? Wasn't Lowe's a home, home and garden store? I don't know. Anyway, let's fight it. Looks like it's pretty fast. It's charging at us. Alright. Oh, we're gonna attempt to shoot at it with our missile weapons. Okay. And, uh, what was this guy's name? Wibbold. Wibbold. What are you doing? Get over there. Go. Nice. All right. Uh, Axiana strikes some kind of vulnerable spot on the no. Maybe uh, a shot shot through the eye. All right. Causing it to wince in pain, but it is not stopping its uh, its charge. All right. Adding more shots into the gnome. But the arrows bounce off of its uh, granite skin. Now we charge it, chipping away at its body while the gnome is busy thrusting its face at uh, Axiana's bosoms. Let us recover our arrows. Axiana was not amused. Okay. Leave. That's no what's the button to travel as a group. G? Yes, makes sense. The traveling single file is Q. It's questionable. Uh get over the can we not stand on it? Axiana's standing on the, the fire thing. Oh. over here. More gnomes. Go. Go. And Axiana is not in the lead, I just noticed. I guess because we're traveling in a group. I know Axiana is making her way forward. Where are we? Uh, we're sort of doing a Wrap around. That's good. Let's put our guys in single file and just line up around this corner. And nothing. All right, clear. Then let us continue forward in mass here. This time, Toby taking the lead, brandishing his military hammer. We found another way down. All right, we'll mark that. But for now, let us continue to explore level three. I think we're level three. In front of what are you doing? Let Axiana pass. In front of like Axiana, stop! It may be dangerous around that corner. I think you should let me take the lead. And Axiana's like, no. Sienna is leader of Congo line. Okay, dun 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 dun. Inferno is careful to avoid Axiana's hips as she does the Congo line dance. <laughs> dun 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 dun. Oh, here we go. Gnomes. More gnomes. Um, they like. I don't know, materialize out of the ground like Putty Patrol. Like, blah, 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 blah. Okay. It's created by the doors to act as uh, guards. Well, as patrols. So they're like the gnome patrol. Kind of like the Putty Patrol or Power Rangers. They haven't spotted us, though. They're not good patrolmen in that respect. Uh, I guess those, uh, well, those, uh, Eyes and mouth parts 
kind of like decoration. Well, maybe not. There's some white there. I don't know. They're like floating. What is this? Is this like a? I don't know. I picture like a uh, like a just like a cube made of made of masonry, and uh, the uh, like the mouth and eyes and nose are just like holes, kind of like a one of them uh, jack o' lanterns, you know, with like uh, some kind of fiery core inside that's powering it through some kind of demonic magic, stuff like that. So this this white thing is like this very hot some kind of some kind of device created through dwarven arcane magics these powers granted to them through uh, like a pact with the devil okay so you know maybe uh, the doors were a peaceful folk but the uh, but this uh, meddling with uh, demonic uh, assistance has uh, corrupted their mind, you know, their souls. All right. Yeah, look, see, in, in this picture, it's all fiery. So I guess I'm correct. All right. And the, uh, the, the gnomes, they uh, sense motion nearby and move in to investigate. Uh, I would like to have Axiana. Okay, draws her bell. Prepares to fire, as do Inferno. There. Each archer aiming for uh, a different eye. Uh, Toby, did you fire a missile weapon last turn? You probably did. I'm going to give you a. Right. Uh, where is it? Okay. Toby picks a uh, dart out of his bandolier. And raises it. Ping. What about your javelin? Javelin is a go. And Hanze, the the wibbled, the wibbled. All right, this thing is taking a hail of uh, missile device. Fire. Oh, yeah. Nice. And they all impact at the same time. Dealing the, the the gnome fifteen damage. Or maybe not, these two haven't drawn their weapons yet. Fire! Point blank. Okay. And, uh, the arrow from Inferno sends like a, creates like a crack between the eyes of this gnome. And, uh, Axiana is gonna raise her shield and then. And her shield and spear. I'm prepared to finish the job. There goes. Widen that crack a little. And the gnome splits apart in two. Alright. Next hand is gonna move in into the southern gnome here. Oh nice! Thrusting her spear down after a leap, dealing the uh the gnome 12 damage. I guess these guys can't do anything. There's no space for them to melee. Or, here you go, Inferno can move in. The Inferno's also bringing in, bringing in his uh, melee skills. Did a fight, there we go. Cracking a part of the gnome Obo and dealing 12 damage with his longsword. This is another crack. Another 12 damage. Good job, Inferno. Just, uh, I guess, uh, taking the... Uh, What's that? What's the what's the part of the sword? The uh, the not sword part. You know the part you hold, the bottom, the round thing at the bottom, the hilt, I guess. Instead of the uh, the blade part, he's uh, instead using the I guess the butt of the sword to uh, bludgeon it. He found that uh, yeah, dealing damage to a, a creature made of main scenery is it's more effective with a blunt weapon. He dealt the thing 12 damage uh, three times. What am I looking for? An arrow. Sometimes I need to learn when to shut up <laughs> so I can focus on what I'm clicking at and what I'm looking for. There we go. 
I'm sorry. I, I get into rambling playing this game. Maybe that's why I, I take breaks, because I like, uh, I review my recording, I just facepalm sometimes. Like, what the fuck was I talking about? Um, but it seems like to me that there are some of you out there that enjoy it for some reason. So, uh, here's to you guys. I am playing Darklands for you. And for myself. Always for myself. Myself is pretty important. I'm a selfish kind of person. Alright. Is coming around here necessary? Maybe. I guess we'll like come around this way, explore what's up here, then come down this way and then do like a serpentine, hoping that uh, this way will lead to this way, around this way. Get what I'm saying? And then we'll come out, we'll do like this, wait, this, this, and then this, and this. It'd be, it'd be, a, it'd be perfect. Alright, let's get a party over this way. I seriously don't know how much time is best. Okay, a large boulder blocks our path, but... Uh, Axie and a geyser party forward. Finding her way in the darkness. She has excellent night vision. And we find ourselves some kind of giant uh, crystal thing, like a, uh, I don't know, like a uh, Starcraft mineral. <laughs> That's there's proof that uh, Blizzard dabbles in demon summoning. Not really. Okay, we found us up another gnome. It's all the way down there, and is trudging its way toward our party. Huffing out smoke. Like some kind of some kind of cube shaped locomotive. Right, Inferno and Xana, or I guess just Inferno, squints past the smoke and aligns his bow with the target. Toby here. Nope. Alright. I guess Inferno is gonna. gonna turkey shoot this thing. It's. it stopped. Inferno has uh, succeeded in his uh, intimidate role. Good job, Paladin. I never put points in intimidate with the Paladin. Maybe I do. Intimidate is. it was charisma. It's been so long since I played DD. But yeah, Paladins in 3.5. If I remember right, they don't get too many uh, too many skill points per level. So Intimidate was a hard stat to put points into. I think I put into other crap like Diplomacy for all the for all the good that did. Because the DM's always like, you need to role play the diplomatic aspects of my game. You can't just roll and succeed. Really? <laughs> But I just I just critted on requisitioning this airship from this captain. But you guys are level two. <laughs> you can't have an airship. But my paladin says he can. That's not how this game works. Anyway, um, so yeah, Inferno is making a porcupine out of this gnome. He's thinking about taking it home back to Canada. Maybe trying to sell this as a garden ornament. It's a garden porcupine gnome. A souvenir from Germany. Wow. Just, just going. Think. 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 <laughs> Hoy, 
seven freaking arrows. Nice. Good job, Inferno. Alright. Inferno single handedly uh, takes out a gnome. Imagine that, that, that scene like a limit break. You know, uh, just in slow motion. Inferno actually fired all those arrows within like a two second time span. Just. Like the, the, the whole scene froze and all these like uh, flashy Pokemon like light effects and Inferno leaped into the air like 50 feet up in the air into some kind of uh, perpetual darkness. Even though, <laughs> uh, the, you know, the, the ceiling in this place is probably no more than, like, a foot above their head. And then just unleash all those arrows and kill the gnome. Let it break. Okay. Now maybe I should be taking looking out for traps. This place looks kind of suspicious. Nexiana spell smells a trap. Let's kind of get her this way. Oh, this is a path. Okay, never mind. That's another StarCraft crystal. Alright, so it, it didn't work the way I wanted to. It didn't wrap around this way. It actually like, looks like a, a room down there that we'll need to investigate. I suppose we should maybe go this way first. Yeah. See, I want to want to look at the pretty crystal. Uh, but uh, Ping deducts that uh, exploring around this way is more prudent, for it will reveal more unexplored territory. But you know, but if we were to wrap around this way, it would lead back to the direction, you know, the way we came. So I see on the sides and goes, okay. But she is happy to find out there is another StarCraft crystal down there, a mineral. Right. She dons her SCV costume. Let us move forward. <laughs> but, uh... I guess uh, walking past it... Uh... And she tries to get a get a view of a reflection off the shiny surface, but uh, peering in, the party the party recoils in horror as they see like I don't know the, the souls of a thousand, ten thousand Koreans trapped in this mineral. They sold their souls to the devil for Starcraft powers, and the and the devil got paid. <laughs> They're all going, help me! Help me! In Korean. But, alas, the party doesn't understand Korean. Uh, Inferno, you know, shakes his fist. Oh, the devil will pay for this. We've got a bunch of doors. That's new and exciting. I'm pretty sure I played for half an hour, though, uh, so... I will pause the recording here, and next time we will investigate what spe what lies beyond these doors, and then and all this stuff, and we'll go through more doors, and things and such. All right, catch y'all next time. Bye.